Toronto. Great to get you to drop by, guys, and uh, thanks for watching our little tree tutorial. So we're going to use uh, the fabulous big Brian. There he is, our uh, large round-ended brush. He's a great guy, part of the loose gang set, part of the gang, part of the gang. He's dropping a little bit of water just into the area of the trees, just in the centre there. Yeah. And uh, that one's a little bit murky, but don't worry about that. We've got lemon yellow. Lemon yellow on Big Brian. Who would have thought that? Very attractive. It sets off the colour of his eyes. So just drape a little bit of that down one side, the light side of the tree. And the opposite side, we're going to put some cad orange in. So just the first one. And the second one, more cad orange than lemon yellow. Yeah. Third one. Starting with cad orange, and then guess what's going to happen? Big Brian will dollop some sap green along the other side. Look at the way that blends, that is amazing! Yeah, and that's the power of using the right equipment like uh, Big Brian. There, if you're using a little fiddly brush, um, good luck, it's going to take you a long time because you'll have to keep going backwards and forwards to the palette. And the only problem with that is your paper dries and it, then you just painted dry paint onto dry paper. Sap green and perylene mix this time. They look like four pairs, don't they? Four pairs standing out in a, uh, well, in a pear bowl, yeah? Sounds good to me. So don't eat them, paint them. These are going to be a fabulous treat. So a little bit of cobalt blue now, just along the bottom edge, yeah, interesting positioning. Now that's really where the uh, sun don't shine, at the bottom of the base of the tree there. So uh, just drop that on, and again, just the handling of the brush is uh, useful. So you can have it 45 degrees or straight up, but it all makes a difference. Mini Dave now, there he is, where have you been Mini Dave? I've called you a few minutes ago. You've been out playing again. You've been in the water, haven't you, Mini Dave? And I tell you what you're doing. It's very useful because you're going around the outside of the tree now, individually, one on one, and just dabbing the edge of the tree. And this softens it and gives you that nice fluid edge, rather than a harsh edge. So we get all the liquid paint on for a start, and then we go back and add a little bit of water and just extend the tree to reshape it, yeah. So little mini Dave is a versatile little fellow, spinning round you get small marks or rather larger marks as you go along. So there you see one of the things I was saying, by the time you get to the third tree it starts to dry a little bit. So that's when you have to agitate the paint a little bit more. Purely just water on Mini Dave there. But if you imagine if, you, uh, if you're using a small brush, it's going to take you a long time to get the stuff on and it's going to dry and you're going to have this sort of issue all the way through your painting, which causes a little bit of frustration. I've noticed sometimes I go like this, or Either of those two sounds you may have made yourself, and it could have been caused by that issue. So Miss Rigger, great brush, fabulous Miss Rigger. I oh, she's one of the splatter queens of the European loose watercolor circuit. So it's just a synthetic brush, so it springs back into action straight away. No dawdling, sap green, and the first one, cad orange, just splat along to the wet area which will blend in. A little bit of cobalt blue as well, just to uh, finish off the splatter routine. Mini Dave, where are you? I'm here. With a little bit of water, just run across, across the baseline, really where the grass, the field is, with no mess in. Lemon yellow, cad orange. Sap green. And 
purple, just to get a light to dark feel of the ground underneath. So you can see there just how those four colours bleed together nicely. A little bit of water on uh, Mini Dave just to go back in and give it a bit of texture. When he was doing it along the top edge, didn't notice that Mini Dave, you are a good fellow. Little tufts of grass. So unless you're on a uh, cricket pitch or a golf course, the grass wouldn't be perfectly mown, so it'd be up and down a little bit. So Miss Rig is back in with cadmium orange. And again, just making a line down so you can get a fabulous line with Miss Rigger there, just by placing it down. You don't even have to paint it, just place it on the paper and the line will follow. It bleeds in to the uh, bank below. Indian red, same thing. Now it may look as if this is on an angle when I'm painting, but I'm not. This is dead flat on the surface of my studio table. That's why it bleeds slowly. Otherwise, all of that paint would just run to the bottom. All over my trousers, all over my jeans, I'd be in a mess. Cobalt blue for the third one. All these are, colours are chosen to try and depict the light and dark. And purple for the last one. Indian red now just to flick out the branches Just picking out the branches, so pulling out the colour and sepia to finish off darker. You notice for the far end, just easily placed on, and then it bleeds back or knocks back a little as well. Cobalt blue, let's have a little shadow cast. Now, let's take it at a bit of an angle. Look at that. Going out to the left hand side, then less of an angle, whoopie do. Then again, we go the opposite way with a bit of an angle towards the right, and the final one will be even more of an angle going out of the page. So there is our tree guys, almost finished. Cobalt blue and perily and uh, purple mix just under the leaves of the tree there to finish off. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. I hope you were successful. Do try it once, twice, three times and you will get the hang of this. So if you do uh, want to learn more, please drop by loosewatercolors.com. There should be a link below. And we've got uh, hundreds, literally hundreds of uh, tutorials for you to uh, give a try. So good to see you guys and catch you again very, very soon.